are in the town of Hooker. Hello, welcome to Frigid Sarah's Diaries of Driving a Ford Ranger Across America. I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana right now. It snowed and iced last night. Snow! So the doors of the truck were frozen, that was fun. Oh great. And uh, everything is covered in white. Not even going to attempt to turn on the wipers. Shred those things to pieces. It's probably a little bit of ice in the ground. The roads look mostly dry though. I like warming my butt by the fire. I thought it was gonna be like green grass and birds chirping and flowers and crops just starting to sprout out in late April. No, it's f***ing winter wonderland. That thing is mint. You never see those older generation Grand Prix anymore, especially not in good shape like that. Progress report. We have made it to Vandolia, Illinois, and I almost lost this thing at 80 miles an hour on the highway. The front shocks are now completely on this truck. If you're road tripping with two people, I suggest wearing white pants because if the vehicle breaks, the other will stuck working on it. <laughs> because the other person won't be, because they're like, I'm not wearing white pants, especially not after Labor Day. I don't know why that's a thing. I can't really show you this while holding a camera, but this thing bounces like a rubber ball when you push down on the front of the truck. We got paper towels. We also have a uh, tarp you can lay on. I don't care about that. I just, there's PB blaster everywhere and I don't want to lay in that. Yeah, that's what's up. Little toolkit came in clutch. <sighs> How's it coming? Is it turning? Yes. The top one just came right off? Yes. Shout out to this little Napa here in Illinois. These guys are in here awesome. Look at this rusty turd. Oh yeah. This thing is fucked. <laughs> this thing is kaput. Is it turning? Yep. Really? really? It's turning! Smart! We PB blast the rears. And by we, I mean the guy that is all covered in dirt because I wore white pants after Labor Day. When is Labor Day? Uh, I don't even know when that is. For a while. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Missouri River. What kind of fish are in you? I'm guessing catfish. Boonsville! Wichita, Kansas is a pretty city. It is. I like this place. If you're from Kansas, good for you. I like this state so far. I have enjoyed driving through it. It's probably in my top three favorite states I've driven through so far on this trip. The Kansas Turnpike had great roads. The infrastructure here seems up to par. The double 53s on the Kansas Turnpike were pretty wild. You don't see that very often. And the triples. And the triples. That's yeah. insane. It was like Australia. Yeah. You could frame swap this thing faster and you could change the front shocks on it. You would spend more time trying to get the front shocks off this truck than it would take to frame swap this truck. It was a euphemism. It took all of like 35, 40 minutes to change all four shocks on this truck. And I broke three out of four bolts. Still, you changed them. Uh, yeah, I did.
scooters. Never heard of one of those before. That Super Duty's got Arizona plates on it. First one on the entire trip so far, so we know we're getting close. It is absolutely freezing and windy in Kansas. I can't believe how windy it is here. We're on a two lane highway pretty much all the way to Oklahoma and then New Mexico. And there's nothing out here. Just switched over. I've been driving for the past hour or so now and got gas at a place of dinosaurs. It was so cute and they had ethanol free gas and now we're on a pancake road and we're about to turn on yellow brick road. Oh, Pancake Boulevard. Look at those people jamming out over there and some tacos. Liberal Kansas is adorable. Absolutely adorable. So far Kansas, that has been a fun state. I have very much liked it other than the wind that almost blows you off the side of the road when a semi truck passes in the other direction. That's sketchy. So we're in the town of Hooker. Interesting name for a town, Hooker. Are any of you over there hookers? Aha, I found some hooker horses. The whole barn full of hookers over there. This truck's leaving town, I wonder if it's hauling some hookers. Been on the same road now in the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma for several hours. And most of the day is spent on this. It's two lanes mostly, super windy. No restaurants really to eat at, it's just gas station food the whole way. What's this dude doing over here? Hello, van dude. Yeah, somebody was playing Minecraft in real life using creative mode and just spawned a shit ton of cows. Oh my, I can't believe those are all cows. It's a far sight from those cows in Pennsylvania. Yeah, those poor animals. Sarah's log. I haven't seen another car in a long time. It's just all big rigs. Honestly, kind of nothing out here. We're in New Mexico, just pulled over at this really nice gas station they have here. So, uh, I don't think I'm gonna be getting gas at this Shell station. Or are you in the bathroom? So, okay. So much for getting gas. By now, none of you should be surprised that I'm washing a vehicle mid-road trip. This is the second time. I gotta keep it clean, so it's easier to clean when I get back to Arizona. There might have been some lingering road salt on here from the states that we went through that used it, so I wanted to make sure I didn't contaminate the state of Arizona with that stuff. We're in the town of Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Truth or Consequences. One mile, that is the coolest name of a town ever. And we got about three hours left until we're in Arizona, and like five hours until we're in Tucson. I got a little tree so it'll smell like New England in here, if New England smelled like a sugar-coated pine tree. City of Elephant Butt, Elephant Butt Lake.
Mission complete. The ranger is home. I just dropped off Charlie. I smell like the inside of a socks asshole. That right there is a giant bruise on the back of my thigh from sitting in a single cab pickup truck for 2,700 miles. I'm gonna go shower. I'll see you mañana. Hello. I've got the truck in my garage. This feels so weird. Like, I don't even know how to put words. I clearly don't know how to do words. I don't, I don't even know what to say. Like, it just feels so weird seeing this truck here in Arizona or even having this truck. But now I have to get this thing up on a lift. I was so obsessed with this little truck growing up. When my grand first got it, I was super excited. I love the color of it. I just thought it was cute with the purple stripes and the bright teal. And now it's just super 90s looking. It makes me love it even more. I know a lot of you came to this channel for stuff like this and this and my MR2. And you're probably wondering why am I doing this in my channel? But if you have a heart, I would imagine you probably get it. And don't worry. This stuff's gonna get worked on because I have to order a bunch of parts for this thing. So I'm not gonna be able to dive right into it until I have everything all set up and ready. That's wild. You can still see the grease pencil on this cross member on the front. I found what was rattling like crazy on the drive driving us insane. It was this thing right here. <laughs> That's funny. Wow. The underside of the cab is actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. This is an area right here that I would think would be prone to rust on this truck because salt and slush would just collect up inside there. But it's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. A little bit right here, but it's just flaky. No holes. The underside of the cab, this quite a bit of surface rust under the cab. It gets a little worse above the Cadillac converter, but that's actually a, just a separate piece. It looks like it's riveted to the bottom of the cab. It's not actually the cab itself. Taking into strong consideration, this is a New Hampshire truck. I'm actually, I'm actually pleased that it's not as bad as I was thinking, getting it up here on the lift. The frame is bad. I mean, if you look back inside there, there's virtually no rust on the inside of the frame. Hell, there's still silver on that hardware. Yeah, up inside here, there's no rust on the top half of that frame. Bottom half of it's pretty bad, but it's solid. There's no holes in it. I think what I'm gonna have to do is get NDI out here. I don't know what the NDI is in the civilian side of life. I need to inspect the thickness of the frame. And I think that's the only correct way to determine if this is usable if I sandblast it. Because if I sandblast it, spend all the money doing it and the time, and then I find out the frame's too thin, then I gotta frame swap it anyway. I mean, there's a couple spots, like right here on the frame, that are pretty gnarly. And I took a wire wheel to it just to kind of see. I don't know, I'm not an expert on this shit, So I need to measure it scientifically to see. Honestly, the only thing that really matters to me is keeping the paint original because the paint on this truck is beautiful. My gram did take care of it and it's in great shape. It's just a couple little areas down here that are f***ed up that I'm pretty sure can be fixed. As far as the green bits go, this is the worst of it. Right back here on the bottom corner of the bed. That I'm gonna have to repair and re-blend the paint. It did bubble down here, but it's kind of confined to this textured area. So I'm gonna cut out anything that is really bad right here grind it, rust convert it, and then re-blend the paint from the texture area down. Even if I have to go a little higher of the texture area, maybe up to there, so be it. But it's not bad. It's really not as bad as I was thinking. Now all I gotta do is acquire some parts so I can start the restoration process. See what I did with the words there? Uh, I also, I'm gonna put on the screen the specs of this truck because a lot of you have asked like, hey, what engine's in it? It's the four liter OHV. But yeah, here on the screen, there is the technical data specs of this truck. It's kind of awesome options that she picked on it. My gram was a massive car nerd. I get a lot of my passion for vehicles from my gram. She owned Mustangs in the past. I think she owned a Thunderbird before this. And she learned to drive on a 1940 Ford pickup truck with a manual transmission. That's why she bought this thing when it came out. 
And um, yeah, she drove it up until the age of 82. <laughs> she drove a manual transmission 4x4 single cab ranger till the age of 82. That's badass. Anyway, I'm gonna end this video here. And uh, there might be another video or two on this, but until I get all the stuff to do the restoration, we're gonna jump on one of the other project cars until I have everything I need to do this thing correctly because it's gonna be frame off super OCD. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.